game 53. Getting close. Let's see what we got this time. Okay, we got black and let's go with check system. Supposed to play e5 and this type of stuff. Let's go into a Philidor where the bishop's misplaced on c4. I mean d3, it's supposed to be on c4 rather. Doesn't make much sense. Keep you out. Be annoying. And like a couple games ago with the London system bond structure, this is the same kind of deal. Um, if you understand how to play these, these can be absolutely devastating. So he's going to have to go h3, g4. Okay. c3. Surprising. Let's do that and see what he does. So I like the piece placement. His knight silly on d1, he's wasted time. Bishop g5 is interesting. It doesn't work. Okay. Makes sense. Look for later. He'll just play g3. Um, One minute eighteen. Good God, I'm playing slow again. time then it gives me time now why didn't I play Bishop g5 to start with there Threatening b2 and f2. Let's 
still threatening B2. And let's secure the pawn structure. All of his pawns are disconnected, making him weaker. Okay, play fast. What are you doing? He's worried about that one. All right. Technique definitely could have been better, but he was spotting me. <laughs> I was spotting him a large amount of time. So <clears throat> I went for a perk which turned into a Fildor where the bishop's misplaced on d3. And there's nothing wrong with this type of position, but like when your opponent's already making this type of trade, it shows he doesn't understand the character of the position overall because it's an open position. The bishop, well, technically it's kind of closed. Um, the knight's going to be better. Like, and notice, moves like c6 versus knight c3. c6 keeps his pieces out. And I have a direct route with my knight to be as annoying as possible. And already black should have an edge here. Because it's, it's hard to, to do much. And he doesn't make the situation better with knight d1. So now positionally, it just becomes a squeeze. So I get rid of one rook because his rook's good. My rook wasn't doing anything. Now I've got an open file. A7 pawn was weak, so I just defend it. I get a look for my king later because I see I've got time. Now I'm going to come back. Now i got a good square on d4. And at this point... I played queen e6 to hit the h3 pawn and just missed f4. Bishop g5 is, like, winning on the spot. <laughs> because if, if queen e1, knight takes f3, wins the queen. If queen e2, I take. If queen d2, queen c1, I take. So you got to play f4. And now this is crushing. And all the same tactics are there. So I could have won on the spot. And save the time of playing, you know, another 30 moves if I would have taken one second to play the right move. And I saw it as soon as I played queen e6 and he played f4. I was like, why didn't I just play bishop g5? Um, but this position is so good anyway. And I thought he had rook d2 here, but <coughs> he's got... After rook d2, I've got queen e1 check. And in the very least, I'll get the knight. And I was happy to go into this ending. Um, I wasn't happy about my time overall. But he decided to play bishop c4, which in my opinion was, I think he was hoping I was pre-moving. And then here, it was just a matter of, I understood that 
in this position, his only passer is the C pawn. So I'm going to eliminate it, and he's still going to have to take time to deal with this guy. So I've got time to collect that pawn, and then this one's going to fall. As long as I don't have any weaknesses and he can't get to anything, like it's trivial from that point, but he ran out of time. Another one.